you for joining us today for Navigating the New Normal. The cracks in our communities, our cities, and our states, and our nation have continued over the past century. This weekend, we felt a seismic shift in these cracks. Our fellow organizations and member companies have stopped remaining silent, and Tech Birmingham is here to add our voice and support as well. As a historian, I can tell you nine ways to Sunday how this has continued to happen. The issues are systemic and it's time to work together to listen, learn, and ultimately begin to fix this system. As you look back through our history, nothing has been gained without our citizens standing up for what's right. From the Boston Tea Party, Brown's Rebellion, and the Civil War, to the suffrage movement, the Civil Rights Movement, ERA and Stonewall, and everything in between. Today, however, is Blackout Tuesday, a social media movement designed to elevate voices and to take a visual stand for change. Many of our members and our friends and myself are using our voices to elevate others. One of the tenets of Blackout Tuesday is to not work and to take time out to listen, to understand, and to learn from each other. Planned prior to this weekend's events, this edition of Navigating the New Normal centers around two things we need most right now, communication and connection. It is time to understand, to honor, and to celebrate our similarities as well as our differences. And this starts with communication and connection. So today, Tech Birmingham will use this time to showcase a few ways to connect with one another in these interesting new normal and physically distant times. I'll turn this back over to Christina now to get this episode of Navigating the New Normal started. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, those are some appropriate words for um, these very unprecedented and um, just unusual times that we're living in. Um, but, you know, I, I know that our community is very strong and this, it's very supportive. And I think with our community, we are going to um, bring on the change that needs to happen. And um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with our program. So today, what we're going to do is we've got two extremely talented entrepreneurs um, with us, joining us, and they both have, are helping us um, with solving um, the problem of how to connect um, in ways that are not awkward, not um, inefficient. Um, and so, you know, with this time of social distancing, you know, it's become even more awkward how to reach out and connect with people. And, um, and so I'm excited that the both of them have agreed to come and be a part of our program and, um, and share the, the solutions that they've come up with um, to help us with, um, with this and with businesses to continue to, um, to prosper and to, to grow. So we'll have Ashley um, present first. Um, and so I'll go ahead and introduce her first and then, um, and then we'll have Jared um, present second. And then um, we'll do Q and A at the very end, but go ahead and again, use the chat um, to ask questions and the Q and A um, to ask your questions and we will um, get to them as um, you know, if, if there's a, a time in, the middle of their program that we could squeeze that in, then we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll just wait until the end to, to do all the questions. So Ashley Ammons um, holds a BA in Mass Communications and Public Relations from Baldwin Wallace University. She's the 38th Black female to raise over $1 million in pre-seed funding. Prior to co-founding Mixed Trows with her mother, Carrie, I love Carrie, um, Ashley established a career as an event producer working with an, with an impressive list of A-listers, including Oprah Winfrey, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Jay-Z, as well as legacy brands like Monet Hennessy, oh, Moet Hennessy, I'm sorry, um, and Coca-Cola. Ashley serves on the boards of the Nashville Entrepreneur Center and Tech Birmingham, is a 2019 Birmingham Business Journal 40 under 40 recipient, as well as Birmingham 40 under 40 for the decade, and the Business Journal's National Rising Star. In addition, Ashley is a proud member of Delta Zeta Sorority, where she was named to their first ever 35 under 35 in 2018. Um, 
We love having Ashley as part of our board and part of our community. Um, I feel like I've known her forever because she just has such a warm and um, generous spirit about her. So thank you so much, Ashley, for joining us. Um, and let me share the screen so that you can share whatever you would like with us. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Number one, I'm on the board of Tech Birmingham, on, on the executive board of Tech Birmingham. And it is one of the things that gives me joy in this city, being able to like help with the future of tech in this ecosystem that has been, that has poured so much into myself, Mixtros and my mom. So it is good to be here, everybody. I feel like I know a lot of people on this call, but if I don't, hi, hello, welcome. Um, the other thing that I would be remiss not to say is I appreciate Tech Birmingham stance for the way that they kicked off this meeting. There are certainly a lot of things going on um, in the world. I'm angry, but I recognize that the work that entrepreneurs do, we have to keep doing it because that's the way things are going to go and grow and get better. So there's that. So with that, I do want to introduce you guys to Mixtros Virtual. I am super excited to do it. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with all, you all so you can see what I am seeing. Um, the first thing I do generally when I'm introducing someone to Mixtros Virtual is I very quickly cover Mixtros Live because Mixtros Live and Mixtros Virtual are super similar to one another, um, except for when it becomes time to meet. So a couple things about the virtual product. It has been in market since the beginning of uh, April, early to mid-April. And the thing is, Mixtros Virtual was always on our product roadmap. We were actually slated to release it this October. But of course, the world happened. And in March, we made the decision to accelerate the development of the product. The reason why we knew we would need a virtual feature is because at that time, near 10% of the US workforce was uh, doing some sort of telecommuting. And also online classes are happening at a greater rate. And so to service our customers in education and um, and enterprise, we knew that we were going to have to have a virtual feature. So we went ahead and launched the software. So this is a refresher on Mixtros, uh, Mixtros Live, just so everybody's on the same page. So let's pretend that we were actually doing this event, event in person today. And let's pretend after Jared and I presented, we were going to do some networking after. You would come into the Tech Birmingham event and it would find a branded activation for you. You would join the mix as we call it and then you would take two and a half minutes or less to fill out your name tag. First part of the name tag is a selfie. We ask you for your selfie because frankly, if you, have a, if you take a selfie of yourself and it shows up in a group later, you're more likely to continue through with the action. The next thing that we ask you for is your name and your email address. Mixtros does not pull from third party applications because for our education customers, we are sensitive to FERPA, we are also sensitive to privacy and data concerns. So the next thing that happens in Mixtros, and this is certainly the most important, is you answer a series of questions. These questions are, are, um, are made up by the event organizer. After we were done presenting, Mixtros would show you who you've been grouped with and where you're going to meet that group as revealed here. You then walk and meet your group. And then once you get there, we give you conversation starters. We also give you your group data so you know what to talk about when you get there. So this is how you achieve increased engagement and data collection at live events. So that is Mixtros Live. And now I'm excited to move over to Mixtros Virtual. So I made a little virtual demo mix uh, for Mixtros today so that you guys could see me walking through the Mixtros Virtual pr uh, process. And so what we're recognizing is people are recognizing in this digital age that we're living in that you can use video communication softwares. And that includes Zoom, WebEx, Microsoft Teams, uh, Ring, you guys can throw out 10 others. You can use video communication softwares to inform one to many, exactly what we're doing right now. The reason that it works that like 25 of us or more are on this call is because I am the one that's talking and y'all are listening. If we all came off mute, it would be like the wild, wild west in here. I know that you guys have been on those calls. And so what we've done with Mixtros Virtual is our customers, and let's just use a school for example, our customers like Texas A&M. Texas A&M wants to use Mixtros Virtual for their new student orientation. So students are going to get on a webinar like a Zoom to listen to the orientation information, make sure they know what happens, how to register for classes, all that sort of thing. But when it becomes time for the peer-to-peer -peer engagement piece, instead of using Zoom's breakout feature, which is kind of randomized, they are going to utilize Mixtros. So students will go through the Mixtros process, they will answer questions, and then they will be placed in groups of three to 
attend in private virtual meeting spaces inside of the Mixture software. We host our own video conferencing software and they will be able to connect. But the big thing is once they get in there, we tell them why they were connected and that's huge. That's where the engagement sparks from. If you put random people in a room, they don't know what to talk about and it turns into a hot mess. If you tell people why they are connected, what they share, what they have in common, what they are passionate about, that's a place for a relationship to start even in a virtual meeting space. We also give them conversation starters. We can layer in group activities and all that good stuff. The other things that our customers have been doing with Mixtros Virtual is we have it so, and I will show you this, so that once all of your groupings are created, if you have orientation leaders, for example, that need to pop from group to group, you can do that. We've been talking with, um, couple brands from WeWork to Twitter about how they're going to be using Mixtros Virtual to engage their fans. And what they're going to do is they're going to have a celebrity of sorts join the mix as well because Mixtros is based on an algorithm. The reason that they're going to do that is they're going to tell fans, hey, complete this Mixtros thing so you can get to know some people from around the world, but you might have an opportunity to end up in a small group with that celebrity. So that's another way uh, that Mixtros is driving engagement from afar. So with that, <clears throat> what we're looking at right now is a Mixtros virtual or Mixtros live dashboard. And what this is showing you is how much user adoption that you have. So I've had a couple members of, of my team pop into this mix with us so you can see what it looks like when people join a virtual mix. So what I'm looking at is the number of people who have joined the mix versus the number of people who have completed all of their questions. By being able to see this information in real time, I'm aware of my user adoption. This helps inform if I need to send an email, if I need to shout out a reminder on the webinar or any of that. As far as the experience for Mixtros Virtual, and I'm going to do it on my phone and then show you in tandem, and then I'm also going to show you on my computer screen. Customers can utilize utilize Mixtros from their iPhone, their Android, or the web. So we have a web app that is available on the phone. We also have a web app that's available on the desktop so people don't have to download something because we know that can be an area of friction. If somebody forgets their Apple ID or they don't have room to download something or what have you, we've heard it all and so we've solved for that. So I launched the Mixtros app and now I'm seeing this event in my phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and join the mix. Uh, something interesting that we do here, I got a link logo going in here. You can layer sponsors inside of Mixtros. So for our customers who are doing conferences, have sponsor partners, you can certainly layer sponsors in here so they get that visibility, but it becomes really valuable to them if you also allow them to answer or ask a question rather, because then they're also deriving data for the sponsor dollars that they've spent. So the first step in Mixtros, as you saw, is I'm going to take my selfie. So here we go. Great, my selfie is taken. So now I'm gonna continue filling out my name tag. So you can see here that my name and my email address are already there. Once you complete Mixtros one time, it remembers who you are. So all you need to do is confirm that that information is still correct. And so now I'm about to enter the Mixtros question series. And I'm gonna give you an example of this both on my computer screen that you're seeing in front of you. And then I also have the questions up here. So this is question one, but on my computer screen is question eight. Let's look at the computer screen. So everything on this screen is customizable from the photo that you're seeing to the question to the answers that are available. Our customers do a hybrid of things. Some of them will have their own set of 10 questions they want to ask. Some of them will have, some of them will choose all questions from the question library that we have, or some of them will do a hybrid of the two. The 10 questions that you ask are completely up to you because these questions are used to one, collect survey style data for you, and also to make matches among the people that you are trying to gather. So the way this works is as follows. So so this question is best of Birmingham. You see there are five options here. So when you're setting this up, if Rebecca or Christina was setting this up, setting up a mix takes less than 30 minutes. But if they were setting this up, they could choose if they wanted to weight this question similar. That means that people who choose civil rights district, they'll be grouped together. People who choose museum of art, they'll be grouped together and so on. They could also choose to weight this question diverse. So that's basically the reverse of that. You would get a mixture of all of these answers in the groups of attendees once they're formed. The third option is to assign no weight to this question. And that means you only want to collect the data for this question and you don't want it to have any bearing on how people are actually grouped and matched together. So I'm going to go ahead and finish answering this on my computer. Look at that. Tell me more about link mixtros. I'm going to say tell me more about link because I know a lot about mixtros. So 
Now I've reached the countdown clock. So basically I, as an attendee, am waiting for the organizer to go ahead and create groupings. I'm gonna also get to the same place on my app, just going through the 10 questions that were posed inside of mixed rows. And then I'm gonna create groupings so you guys can see what that looks like. Okay, so now I am at the countdown clock on my phone as well. Same place on the web app, same place on the phone. So now if I go back over to the administrator screen, I can see that I have four people who have joined the event and four people who have completed their questions, 100% user adoption. So I'm gonna go ahead now and create my groupings. Oh, one other thing that I do wanna add, Mixtros very specifically matches people in groups. The reason why we match people in groups is because sociology upholds that people prefer to meet one another in a small group setting. We make groupings of no less than three, no more than 10, but you as the organizer get to decide how large or small your groupings are. So I just changed our group size to four to accommodate the people that I have in this mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and create groups. And I will know that groups have been created because data will populate right here as it just did. And so on the app side, so now I'm gonna do this from my phone app so you guys can see. My, I got a notification that the group has been created. So I can see the people that are in my group. I'm in there twice because I completed it from my, my computer and I also completed it from the phone. But now I'm gonna go ahead and check in. And then, and guys, I have to say, bless my, bless my team, but they didn't set this up for a virtual mix. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to show you from a video. Hold on one second. And if my team is on the call, it's okay. Mistakes happen, y'all. Hold on one second, everybody. You see how I like go with the punches though? It like doesn't matter what's going on. I'm gonna go with the punches. So here's a video to show you what that actually looks like when you get to the screen. So here is joining your virtual mix. And then when you join, so you get to a screen that looks like this and it says join virtual mix. And so you click that and then it launches you into a virtual meeting space with the two to nine others that you have been connected with. So this is a video of my team doing a test. So we're all joining the virtual mix there. We're coming into the virtual mix. But the other thing that Mixtros gives you, if I can just scrub ahead here, are those icebreakers that are customizable by the event organizer and then also so the group data so you can understand why you were matched in this particular group with the group of people. So that's what you guys would have seen on the demo had we been set up for a virtual mix. But again, guess what? I'm not going to let that bother me today. The last thing I'll show you before I pass it off to Jared is also when groupings are created and it doesn't matter if it's a live or a virtual mix. Um, you can see, you can get a look at the data. So you can see how people answer the questions that you pose right there in real time. So as soon as groupings are created, data becomes available to you. Um, the thing that I will say about this is something else that we found is because you ask your attendees to do this in real time while they're still engaged at the event that you're hosting, whether it's live or it's virtual, you get a higher user, you get a higher user adoption rate. So for mixed rows activations, we're right around 85% user adoption every single time we do an activation, which crushes the industry standard for event software, which is somewhere around 35 to 40%. In addition, this really kills um, doing a post event survey as people who host events know, you send attendees a post event survey and the completion rate for that is about 15%. And what ends up happening is you get people who are really excited or people who are really upset and you miss the middle of the bell curve. So with doing mixed rows in real time, higher user adoption, you also get better data to work with. And then finally, we also give you a look at, based on how the weighting goes, why people were matched with one another. So these are the things that become available to you in a mixed rows activation. Again, I apologize for the uh, setting up for a live mix rather than a virtual mix. But again, saw I'm going to let that go. So um, I look forward to your questions. Um, the only other things that I would think to add is we really do events of any kind. Um, so anywhere that 50 or more people are gathering live or virtually, that becomes, um, that becomes a unique place for mixtures to be layered. And what we're seeing just as we're looking at events and gatherings moving forward, a lot of brands, I'm seeing them adopt a hybrid approach to their events. So I just did a demo this morning with Belmont University, for example, and they are purchasing mixed both in the live and virtual 
um, spaces because some of their students will be on campus. Some of their students will be coming in virtually. It's up to the students, but they do believe at this point the campus is going to be open. So having the ability to do both a hybrid approach, it's really a look into the future. And in fact, events people are saying based on the trends, 45% of events moving forward are going to have some sort of hybrid element to it. So with that, I would welcome your questions after Jared goes. Hi. Okay. So uh, let me introduce Jared really okay. quick. Um, no, no. Uh, I am having, I have lost my, all my windows. Um, <laughs> so Jared, um, I met him a couple years ago when he was still working at Shift. Um, but last year, um, him and some of his friends um, really took a leap of faith and they uh, launched Link. Um, and we had so much fun with them at Sloss Tech and seeing the energy from their team and um, and even the, the them pitching Alexis Ohanian. That was so much fun to, to watch that. And you can definitely tell that these guys have the gift of hustle. Um, but Jared is the CEO, COO and co-founder of Link. And um, Link is one of the media sponsors for uh, the navigating the new webinar or navigating the new normal. I need some sleep. Um, but thank you, Jared, for joining us um, today. All right. Um, you can go ahead and take it away. Thank you for having me, uh, Christina and Rebecca. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I got to, I got to tell you, Ashley, thank you. Um, thank you so much for being who you are. Um, thank you for being the leader that you are in this community and not only in more specific this tech this tech uh, community I know how I can speak to how hard it is to get a uh, company off the ground and try to make something work and I can't imagine what it what it could be like to go through the extra hurdles and everything that you've had to go through to get mixtures to where it is now and you can't you can't think of tech in Birmingham without thinking of Ashley Emmons and thinking about Mixtros. And I want to thank you for being the leader that you are. You've been an inspiration to me since I saw you on stage two years ago at Sloss Tech and made me, made me think I want to be on that stage. And that's what we did that next year with Link to get us off the ground um, and be and try to make this thing happen. Um, you know, I, I have my link code there. That's something that we did for, for everything that's happened with uh, COVID-19. We wanted to give people a good way to connect virtually. Um, if you would like to scan that or type in linkapp.com slash Jared to connect with me, you can learn more about Jared, about Jared. But yeah, you can call and learn more about, you can uh, call me and learn more about me if you want, but you can reach out if you want to know more about link there. Um, Right now, I think uh, it's it's more important for uh, me to listen that and me to listen than to speak. And uh, I would like to give it back to you, Ashley, and uh, let you let people take questions for Mixtros and uh, let, let let you have the floor, actually. Um, y'all. So just so you know, this was not scripted. I did not know he was going to do that. But I think it's an important thing that just happened on this call. And I think, um, and I think again, it will be remiss not to let this conversation go the way that it's going. So here's the thing about Jared. So people look at Link and Mixtros and you know, you could say we're competitors, but we're actually not. Uh, Link and Mixtros have complete synergy. And I do believe in future that we'll be working together because we've, we've, me and we've joked, me and the other, me and the other founders of Link have joked like first you mix, then you link because that makes a whole heap of sense. Um, the thing is, and Jared knows this, when you're a founder and you're trying to stand up a company, you have to be so razor focused. And it's like, sometimes you can't worry about like the integration piece just yet, but it will come once you're both stood up and like going and all of that. And so um, 
what Jared just did is important. And I, I'll be honest, I don't think anybody has ever done that for me before on a call. Matter of fact, I was on a pitch a couple of weeks ago and they skipped over my questions because they ran out of time until somebody cussed them out for doing that. So um, I think the future in Birmingham is bright. I think, um, I, 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 you know, I think we can answer questions. We can talk about connections and all of that. But I mean, I think the real thing here is that we talk about the fact that this ecosystem is going to grow. We talk about the fact that um, because I am here and I'm a black founder who's raised a million dollars, like that is a good thing, but there has to be more me. It's like it just can't, it can't be just me. And so, you know, one thing I have been trying to do just in light of all of this is just calling stuff as I see it. So if you, if you see me on social media, I'm kind of ferocious. I'm nice though, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ferocious and um, it's for good reason. There's a lot of real stuff that's happening. Things are real, real hard. As Jared said, it is, um, as Jared said, it is, it, this, this entrepreneurship thing, it is not for the faint of heart. Honestly, it will give you a heart attack so fast. You're worried, you're, you're up in the night, you're sweating, you're like, I mean, it is a mess. There's a million things going on in your mind and your head and then come, compounded with the fact that, you know, I happen to be black and female. And again, for Jared to just come out and say that, y'all have to know that that's a huge deal. And that gives me grace and some sort of pause that we're like on the right track. And so with that being said, both Jared and I would love to answer questions and I can sum it up for you. Jared's business link is solving for being able to share your information easily. Um, I know this stat from them, 87% of business cards get thrown away after events. That's a lot of money being wasted. That's a lot of trees dying. And Link is the app that solves for that to make the business exchange um, seamless and simple. And of course, that's the continuation of after you meet someone, how can we make the next step easier and better so that those connections are actually valuable? Ha, how did you, Jared? Couldn't do it better myself. <laughs> so yeah, so I see, uh, I see, uh, have you gotten anything in the comments, Christina? I'm like beside myself. I'm sure. about to write a whole post about this because I don't even know. This, no is, uh, this is a be this is why I love this community so much. I love that we have um, these beautiful unscripted moments where um, entrepreneurs can support entrepreneurs. Um, but even stepping back besides being entrepreneurs, this is just um, a beautiful piece of humanity unfolding. And so I love this. Um, Leah Pope um, commented that this is power, a powerful and beautiful moment. Um, and Justin affirms that. So um, thank you for, um, for doing that, Jared. That was, um, that was extremely brave and very vulnerable. Um, and Ashley, it's beautiful how you accepted it with open arms. So um, I know it can be intimidating to, um, and, and awkward. A lot of times, um, like I don't, I don't know what to say, you know, in these situations because I don't want to unintentionally say the wrong thing and make it worse. And, and, and for me, um, you know, I, I don't want anyone to think that if I've been silent on any issue, it, it isn't because I haven't taken a side. It's because I want to be measured and deliberate. I don't want to cause more hurt in a situation. And so, um, Jared, I'm just saying that that is so brave that you did that. Um, you know, that, that takes a lot of balls. <laughs> To, to, to come <laughs> lack um, of a better term <laughs> um cojones yeah um, but th that was beautiful um let's see kim davis um comments i appreciate watching this as well thank you so much for this um i think we need to have more moments like this um in order for us to to find um how to heal you know, from, you know, this is, this is not, these aren't new wounds. These are wounds that have been with us since, you know, the beginning of time really. And so there's always been injustice and inequity and somehow we managed to uh, make it worse. 
and I think now it's the time that we can start moving towards making it better. And can I, I was going to say one thing that I'll add just because, cause like, I feel like I would just be remiss not to just share a little without droning on. It's 1235. I know we're supposed to wrap in a bit, but let me just say this for the people who are on the phone, because I think the people who are on the phone are the change makers. Like you guys on the phone are the agents. And if you know more about what the experience is like, you can do, you can do more. So just to give you all a little personal background on me, I was actually raised in a family where my stepfather's white, my mom is black, my brother is mixed. I had four white step siblings moving up and that was in the nineties. And so we were like the weird family on the block. Like we couldn't go on family vacation without like the TSA ripping apart our luggage because they were convinced we were doing something nefarious. So that is my reality. But what I'll say about that is my reality comes with privilege and I, I recognize that wholeheartedly. I, even as a black woman, because my mom and dad are black, but I, as a black woman, I have extreme privilege. Reason why? I happen to be lighter in complexion. I happen to have freckles. I happen to have light eyes. And that means something. It means that people who are lighter than me generally aren't scared of me. I, you know, if I'm walking somewhere, people don't cross the other side of the street because they're just like, yeah, that's fine. Also, I have this tonality to my voice. I cannot tell you how many times someone has come up to me and said, you speak so well, thinking that that's a compliment, but as if I should speak something else. And so my mom and I have talked about this at length. This journey was hard, but it wasn't as hard as some other black females living in rural Alabama who, you know, don't have a half white family and that sort of thing, you know, because my mom and I, you know, just like we're aesthetically pleasing blanket statement, we can speak well, we both have college educations, um, you know, we we were able to live off our savings for three years, because mixtures became an idea at the end of 2014. It took us 2015, 2016, and 2017 for people to kind of stop telling us it could not be done because we were two black females in the South. That was the reasons. You cannot do mixed rows. It's a good idea. You two can't do it. And because we have been successful in our careers and we had savings, that's the only reason why we're here today because if we wouldn't have made it through those first three years, mixed rows would have died on the vine. And um, we started our business in Nashville. We had to get out of Nashville because we couldn't get, a rate, oh, get away from that jargon. We could not rise. And Birmingham ended up being the place uh, where we could rise because Birmingham, at the time that we got here in 2018, it was looking for founders like us. It wanted women founders. It wanted founders of color. They didn't care you know, what um, industry your business was in. If you had a business that seemed sensible and you were a hustler, Birmingham was for you. And we found that here. And we hustled the crap out of everything to make Birmingham work for us, which it is. Um, but, the big, but the big thing that always like hits me in the chest is I am, my family actually originates from a plantation in North Alabama called Barton House. One of my family names is Barton and it's so, it's so real. So to see the systematic things that are going on is wild. Like I had to deliver a speech at Ole Miss earlier this year. When I tell you I was shaking in my boots to drive from Alabama to Mississippi as a black woman in a nice car. Like it just, it gave me pause because Christina read my bio at the beginning of that, all those titles, guess what? If I get stopped in Mississippi somewhere in the dark, I'm just another black girl with dreads. They don't know who I am, they don't care. And although it shouldn't matter who I am, it does. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, you know, we're navigating around this every day. My parents just bought a house in Hoover. They bought that house mid-April, from April till today, I have been stopped in that neighborhood no less than five times by the police asking me if I live there. And, you know, I'm just like walking around, just like hanging out, but like they just can't, they can't compute those things. And so these things are happening. But the thing that I like to be clear about is my struggle is not as hard as other people's day-to-day -day struggle who look like me for 
societal reasons. And so I'm aware of that. And so I know that the more that I can do as a founder to be vocal and to call people out when I see bad behavior, that's the role I have to play and I'm here for it. And there is something magical about being in Birmingham, the place where this all starts from. It's like Birmingham truly has to be an example for everybody else. And, um, and I'm just big on that. And honestly, if you like, if you are a white person and you are looking to be an ally, it's about action. You know, I think all these hashtags and all this kind of stuff, it's good. It's great. But realistically, educating yourself on what the actual issues are and then getting uncomfortable in your own circle of friends when somebody says a slighted comment or something like that, stomp that shit up. Oh, stop. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. So wait, stomp that stuff out. Wait, guys, I, I almost made it. Stomp that stuff out because it's going to be those little pieces coming together that make a big, 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 huge mm -hmm. difference for everybody. And between what Jared just did, I was at the um, the peaceful protests, um, you know, during the day on Saturday. Um, I actually stopped a young lady, white young lady. She was just walking around. She had like 18 bottles of water in her hand, just hand handing out water to people. And I just said, what are you doing? And she was like, I just want people to stay hydrated. I want their voices to be heard. It blew my mind. I was like, well, that there is action. Thank you. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's the little things like that. It's like the day-to-day -day things. And, and also just recognizing that there is a problem. Like, I think we've all passed the point of being like, is, it, like, is there really, is there racism in the U.S.? Yes. <laughs> answers yes um and so the quicker we all recognize that the quicker we can all do something about that and again um this conversation <laughs> wasn't supposed to go this way but like i think it's the most beautiful thing ever and i can't wait um christina for you you share this video so that I can do with it what I need to do because I I'm here to share examples of what it looks like in practice not just in theory so thank you Jared thank you Christina thank you Rebecca thank you for all the people that stayed with me during that I I don't even know what to say I'm like I got on this phone call so angry and I'm just like in such a peaceful place and it came from that guy so thank you um, I think one thing that you pointed out, um, and this is something that I've, I've struggled with and I didn't know quite how to articulate it until you just mentioned it, but um, I, I call it slacktivism. You know, they're doing, people who put a hashtag on their social media, that's really just being the bare minimum, you know, doing the bare minimum. Um, and, and then, you know, outside of social media, behaving a different way. Um, you know, to me, you know, why bother, you know, doing that if you are, if you're not going to live that out in real life. So um, I think it's what you touched on about that young lady, you know, doing something so small um, was probably louder than all the hashtags in the world put together. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see, we've got some comments here from the audience. Uh, let's see, um, Justin Nelson writes, um, this is such an amazing uh, Tech Tuesday or webinar. Thank you for sharing so much. I feel it's extremely important we are talking about these issues um, because we have to stomp this out. Um, yeah. Sorry, I have kids around so I can't <laughs> speak freely. This, my new normal is also working in a schoolhouse. Um, Kim Davis writes, um, there are sad truths. I appreciate all you all allowing this awkward conversation that um, is hard to have in the professional realm, but it needs to be had. You were saying what we are all scared to say in the professional realm. Thank you, thank you. That is very true. It's, it's hard to know what to say and to navigate because again, you know, you don't want to alienate further, you know, by, by misspeaking. Um, and so um, thank you also for having the patience, you know, as we are trying to fumble through our emotions and our thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. Ben Branch says, awesome, Ashley and Jared. Kim Knowles, you are beautiful. Um, you were beautiful for opening up with us. 
Thank you, Thank you all. for being so vulnerable. I was going to say, this is the best, this is the best thing I've done in a long time. So I appreciate y'all. One of y'all should send me a therapy bill. Thank you. <laughs> it's not I stand with you, Ashley. If there's anything I can do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Christina, I think this has been great. Rebecca, well, I was going to say, I know Rebecca's coming back and she got a huge smile on her face. She does. Dude, this has been absolutely wonderful. And a friend of mine recently made a comment on social media that it's okay to be an ally, but it's better to be an accomplice. Mm. So, you know, sometimes being an accomplice is being a little subversive, like I snuck all that in on you first thing today. <laughs> but, you, you set know, us up. I'm also going to be like, here's the t-shirt of the day. I'm voting. I hope you're going to vote. Here's my PSA. Vote starts in your own communities. And that's where it needs to continue from. So that is from my activist past, which we won't It's still here. going strong. <laughs> Wait, it's still going strong. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys for just being amazing. Um, this, both products, I have been, gosh, Ashley, how long has it been? 2018, girl. Yeah, and Jared too. I have been, I can probably pitch both of these products as, almost as well as they can at this point in time, because I've used them both so much. And um, I am just so pleased you guys were both available today. And I am really pleased that we did opt to continue and go through with this today. Because I, I think agree. it's been a really important discussion overall. Plus, it's useful tools to get people connected. And like mm -hmm. I said earlier, communication and connection is key. And you guys are facilitating that amongst people. So, well, thank you. I was going to say thank you, everybody. I would say Jared and us, Jared and I are very easy to find. So, if you'd like to follow up on either product, please do. And the thing, the one thing that I will say, the best thing that you can do for entrepreneurs, because we have to get over this hump in Birmingham, is buy. Talking is great, buying is better. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you. For having us, ladies. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, I'm going to stop recording now.